So today, um, basically the plan is the car is not coming back out of the garage until all the work's done. Um, so we are gonna start with the clutch and flywheel and the axles along with the engine mounts and the transmission mounts and the torque mounts since that's all kind of one job. So that's the plan. I'm gonna just dig in. I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to film today because I am starting quite a bit later than I'd hoped to be able to. But we are just gonna dig in, see how fast I can rip the transmission out. And while I, once that's out, I'm gonna replace all the engine mounts. We're gonna throw the new clutch and flywheel in, put that back together, put new axle shafts in. And then depending on where we are in the day, that might be it for today and continue tomorrow. Today, Saturday. It's a quick progress update. I pulled the top strut bar, pulled the intake, I got the slave cylinder unbolted and out of the way, pulled the starter, and I've disconnected all the wiring from the top. So now I'm going to go ahead, um, I've also got to get that back mount unbolted, and then there's the side mount and the torque mount. So I'm going to loosen the wheels, put it up in the air, and start draining the fluid. I'm going to yank the axles out, and then we'll go from there. All right. Update time. We've got axle shaft out. And axle shaft out. And I just pulled the rear transmission mount out. It's already afternoon. The snow's kind of starting to melt out here. It like pretended to snow on us last night and this morning, but it's all melting now. So anyways, I have caffeine, I have music. We'll continue on. I'm trying to get away with not removing the exhaust. And that means I've got this one bolt that's giving me trouble because it hits the exhaust. Um, so I've got to kind of pry this out to get that threaded all the way out. But as far as I can tell, that's the only thing still holding this in. So I should be able to pry it out a little, get that loose. You can see it's it's coming off. We got we got some space here, um, but I just can't get the the input shaft to wiggle loose. So now I've got my jack on the transmission housing itself, so I can kind of play with the angle of it and match the angle of the engine. I've just got the engine hanging right now. I'm replacing these mounts anyway, so I'll just abuse these ones and then uh, replace them once the job's done. So it's almost off of there. There it is. It is out. fork there, throwout bearing. I think my clutch kit has a new one of those, so we'll get that all swapped out as we go through the replacement. You can see it's just uh, it's pretty goopy under here. So we're going to pull the pressure plate off, then we'll pull the flywheel off, inspect everything, and if it does need a rear main seal, I'm going to have to get just wing it with the tires in the truck. It is actually snowing right now. Colorado in April. It's all out. Um, here is the old clutch. So there's really no groove left in it at all. And then this is our old pressure plate. The wear on the fins isn't really too bad. There's a small lip. Um, but again, you can see this thing's just pretty glazed up and there's no cracking So it didn't get too overheated despite my best efforts at abuse and here is the factory Flywheel again you can see it isn't really in bad shape, but it is Pretty pretty glazed you can uh, you can see my garage decorations there. It's like a mirror so, here is our new clutch. 
as you can see, we are far from any rivets, and you've got those nice grooves. This is an exity, exity, ex, exity, however you pronounce that word. Um, this is just their street weight. Um, since the engine's still stock, I decided not to go with a stage one or two or anything. Um, because this is, this is extremely cheap compared to if you go with like a stage one XD clutch. Um, and since it's stock for now, it's not getting more power till later on. I didn't figure I needed anything more than a street weight. But a new throw out bearing. Um, comes with the alignment tool. And it also comes with some installation grease as well as an input. Um, pilot bearing. So I went ahead, I already put the pilot bearing in the new flywheel. Just took a little rubber dead blow and went ahead and hammered that in. And then you can see nice new surface that I will clean before I install it. But so the reason I'm going to go ahead and go with the new flywheel is not only did I not want to deal with having to go and get that machined, also this stock one. It's, it's about 19, 18, 19 pounds from what I can find online, the specs. This one went with the 12 and a half pound. So dropping quite a bit of weight off of the clutch assembly there. So I do not have a new rear main seal on hand. And as you can see, that is definitely leaking. It is goopy. Um, yeah, so it needs a new rear main seal. You can see the oil, I thought it might be coming from up here. You can see that's all dry. The oil doesn't start until down here. So I need to do a new, new rear main seal. Um, I also did not grab new axle seals yet. So I'm gonna have to make a little run here um, for parts. Um, another issue, even though I have a lot of tools. Um, the pressure plate bolts are a 12 point 10 millimeter and the only thing I have that's a 12 point is a wrench. So I was able to get them off but to be able to torque them back down to spec I've got to get a socket. Similarly the flywheel bolts, grab one here, are a 17 millimeter 12 point. I only have 12 and 14 millimeter 12 points from my time at Toyota. So again, I had to take these off using a wrench very carefully. And, uh, but I need to torque these back on. So I've got to go get a couple of sockets, one for each of these. I need to get a rear main seal. I need to get two axle seals. And I also need some brake clean because I'm out. And I'm also going to go ahead and grab a couple of oil filters because I did not think I had to grab those from the dealer either, and it's Saturday, so I need to get over there before they close. So Adam's helping by looking up parts for his Subaru. <laughs> I'm here, guys. <laughs> I got the housing. I pulled the housing for the rear main seal off, cleaned it up, reinstalled it. There's my crank there, and then I've got a new rear main seal to put in. So we're gonna put this in, then we will start putting the new flywheel in, clutch in and we'll just start putting this bad boy back together. All right, new lightweight flywheel. It is a competition clutch brand flywheel. 12 and a half pounds is torqued on. I need to do a little more cleaning before I put the pressure plate on, but got all the bolts torqued down to spec. Well, off to the store for the second time today because I did not realize this before, but the factory clutch uses six bolts and they look exactly like this this aftermarket the flywheel and clutch use nine bolts so i'm three short so we're gonna run to the store hope somebody has them um ace is already closing so we can't go there so we're gonna try an auto store first and if they don't have it we'll have to try home depot or something but all right so you can see what, so I was able to go find three bolts of the right length and thread pitch at the store. So since these are 
the new one basically has they're in sets of, it's three sets of three bolts, so I did the center ones with the new ones to keep the weight balance the same, and then reuse the factory ones. So all nine bolts are in, it's nice and lined up. So I think we are good to go. Uh, now I gotta replace the throw out bearing on the clut, or on the fork here, and then we'll be ready to start putting the transmission back in the car. Adam's still working hard. I'm here. I'm, I'm car searching, guys. I'm car searching. <laughs> it's so dark in here. <laughs> so it's after 10 o'clock. We're going to call it for tonight. But we finally, it took us over an hour. The transmission just would not line up. That input shaft, for some reason, did not want to go. And we fought and fought, and it finally just slid in like nothing. So. Transmission is back in. It is mostly bolted up. Um, I got the new mount here as well as the new torque mount up under here. But tomorrow I have to finish. There's a couple more mounts to put on. And then the axles go back in. All the little stuff up top goes in. Then hopefully tomorrow afternoon we can move on to the brakes. So. Yeah, we're going to go get some sleep. And we are back. Again, later than I'd hoped, but we had stuff to do this morning and afternoon, so it is now Sunday evening. And we're about to dive back in. So, I've got a few more brackets to bolt up on the transmission. Everything's where it was when we walked away last night. So I'm going to get those brackets underneath. i got to get my new axle shafts installed get the knuckles put back together, get the top stuff put back together on the transmission. So we're gonna dive in, see what happens. Adam might swing by later to lend a cheerleading hand. But uh, we'll see how quick this goes. All right, just got the side engine mount replaced. I can release this along with this torque mount down here so that's in shape now so recap what these were looking like my rear transmission mount was actually in pretty good shape so it didn't really have to be replaced but I had the new one so swapped it the transmission torque mount was cracked but overall you know, it was still holding together. It, it was pretty cracked, but it was hanging on. But <clears throat> the transmission mount itself was completely separated. That's just sitting in there now. The side engine mount is completely torn open. See, it's just, yeah. So that was shot. And my driver's side torque mount was completely done as well. So, glad I had those on hand. Here we are again. What up, people? It's the end of the night, Sunday. We thought it was gonna be drivable after this, but my misfortune continues. <laughs> so, it's all back together, pretty much. Only thing I have to do top end is put the cross brace back on, but it's so tweaked while it's in the air, I can't get it back on right now. Um, got the new axles in. So they're all, all in and happy. Everything underneath is buttoned up. However, we are going to put this lower ball joint here. And the threads were goofed up a little. So I fought and fought with it, finally got the bolt to go back on, the nut to go back on, and it stripped the threads off of the ball joint. So I can't tighten it. So it's not drivable till I now replace this right front lower ball joint. So now I have to go buy ball joints. Just one thing after the next. Dude, I know. The luck with the Civic has not, not been good. <laughs> not been good. He keeps getting to see the struggles <laughs> it's, of it's close though, man. It's garage close. wrenching. It's very close, so. So, anyway, so again, we'll pick this up tomorrow, hopefully. 
and it's a new day. We're about to continue on the Honda. Uh, it's been a couple days. Uh, we last left off on Saturday night. Monday, Tuesday, I had some shenanigans going on with work, so couldn't make any progress on the car. Um, I did find a buyer for the big monster wheels that were in the back of the truck. Um, guy needed a spare set for his off-road build so he can roll it around, so those went to a good new home the other night. Um, it's now Wednesday evening. Uh, swung by O'Reilly's, picked up two new ball joints. Planning to just go ahead and do both of them, even though only one of them's messed up. I'd rather replace parts like this in pairs. I'll probably go ahead and move on to the brakes before I actually drive it. Um, I did go ahead, I cleaned out and flushed out the clutch fluid the other night, bled it through here, had Adam help me um, actually bleed any air after I'd flushed all the fluid through. So nice fresh fluid for that new clutch. So that should be running great once it's back on the road. All right, so working on the second one now. Got it out, and I'll show you, I'm not 100% really happy with these aftermarket ones, but um, this is one of the old ones. And you can see the threads just got all laid up. Um, this is a nice, shiny new unit. They are greasable, which I'm not really a fan of putting greasable parts in my cars, honestly, because it's just kind of obnoxious knowing that you got to check that once in a while. But one thing they did do that's kind of cool, they give you a grease fitting so you can fill it, and then a little plug fill it, fitting. So once I grease them, I'm just putting the plug in so I don't have this monstrosity sticking out the top of the ball joint. So both knuckles are back together. Got the new axle nuts on the state. Got the new castle nuts on and cotter pinned. I did have to pull the brakes off so I could move the backing plate and get access for the press, but that is all done. Um, to wrap this one up, I'm going to go ahead and knock out an oil change. Already threw a new filter on the other day while I was under the car working on the transmission. I do always use just factory Honda filters. Um, new crush washer. They're like, with the crush washer, it's like eight or nine bucks at the dealer. So I always grab a couple while I'm there. We are gonna go ahead and use our new Purell, the 530 Synthetic. Um, and I actually got set up with a partial sponsorship with these guys. Um, I've been wanting to run this oil ever since I kind of started following all of Bizimoto's builds. Um, I know he uses it in his little Honda Wago and uh, his wild Porsche builds and all that kind of stuff. So I've been wanting to run this and I was able to get set up with a partial sponsorship with them. So I'm gonna be running Pure All. All this year is the plan. I got a couple cases of it sitting inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and do an oil change with that. And then later on, um, so I'm gonna wrap this up, then I'm gonna do the brakes as a, just a separate video because I gotta get that knocked out. Okay, so I lied about being done with this video when the oil change was done. But I forgot I still have to fill up the manual transmission fluid. So what I'm using, I got three ports. This is actually Acura manual trans fluid, but the part numbers are the same as Honda, so it should be just fine. Um, the fill plug is right next to the axle there. You can see my hose going into the hole where the plug goes. And I've got this nifty little pump. It's got a little directional arrow on the bulb. I got this from Harbor Freight for just a few bucks, I think. Transmission fluid is all filled up. It took all three quarts to get it to the full. And as a finisher, put the little Pure All Oil emblem slash mascot. So he's going to be riding along on the Civic from now on. So completing the sticker lineup here. All right, this has been a almost week long video. So hope you guys enjoy. Um, we'll be back with brakes and then some fender rolling after that. Hopefully all this week. So we're going to keep rolling. See you next time.